The Combat Achievement Diary, a testament to a player's problem solving, spatial reasoning, and overall skill in old school RuneScape. My goal is to complete the diary in the lowest in-game time. This is the Zuckhelm Any% speedrun, starring GM to GMs. The Tombs of a Mascot, Old School RuneScape's third raid, and Old School RuneScape's third best raid. There's 50 tasks for us to complete, and unlike the Theater of Blood, we're going to complete them all on the first and only visit here. Much like the Theater, there's a large variety of tasks, including stress-inducing perfection tasks, goofy gear tasks, and a kill count task. Thankfully, this one is only one-third the size of what we experienced last episode. For this raid, there's no training regiment, so we get to dive right in without me yammering. But before we do anything, we need to talk about the state of my Osmumpton's Fang. It's hideous, and it needs a kit desperately. Welcome a Mascot's Remnant, the first task we'll be going for today. Complete the tombs of a Mascot at a raid level of 500 or above, and no one can die. With a yellow Karis, this task is light work, but we don't have one of those now, do we? For those who don't know, the Yellow Karis is a weapon whose special attack drains your prayer by 50, but overheals you to 120% of your hit points level. This allows you to take the invocation called Dehydration with little drawbacks, and it's worth a whopping 30 points. And since we can't use that, here's the invocation list we're taking for this one. Let's see how this all fleshes out. A couple of mistakes in Akka, but we should have just enough supplies to see this through to the end. But before we continue the video, I'd like you all to leave a comment congratulating me on achieving 99 range during my first ever solo raid on this account. Thank you in advance. Alongside a ton of other tasks, there's a Mascot's Remnant completed, and the Fang has been upgraded. Now we have the power to ego everyone, and even more so after this task. Meet one of the two gatekeeping tasks in the tombs, Perfection of Het. Think Perfect Theater, now put that in the entire Akapath. Also, the mining puzzle needs to be done in one cycle. And one more thing, you can't solo it. So like any sensible old school RuneScape player in 2023, I'm doloing it. Jokes aside, this is considered to be one of the hardest tasks in the raid, and is incredibly unforgiving. Every invocation for Akka has to be turned on, and on top of that, even getting hit during Enrage fails the task. So unless you've played a lot of bullet hell games growing up, this room is an absolute nightmare. The only upside is, if you fail the boss itself, you don't need to redo the puzzle room. So I've got the main pack yacked with supplies to accommodate. If I can clear this task in under an hour, I'll be happy.
That's just barely under an hour, but I consider that a win. I think I'll hold off on the other gatekeeping task for later, and move on to something a bit lighter for now. All praise Zebok. All Zebok invocations, level 4 or above, don't lose a prayer point. And I called this a lighter task. None of the bosses can start at level 4, so I've got to walk the path until he hits that. Thank you. I didn't have to do this one again. I'm not a fan of these prayer point tasks. Finishing out the raid, I forgot to mention, I turned on Aerial Assault for this task. So as the task says, better get moving. Nice cheeky little pickup there, on to the next task. Doesn't bug me. Kefri has to be level 4, all invocations on, and that includes this abomination, Medic. That's where the Webweaver comes in. It's a fast weapon with a long range, so I can snipe out the spawns that fly up to Kefri to heal her. Everything else is self-explanatory. After about 7 minutes, Kefri took a nap and we got another nuisance out the way, but there's another one to come. Babananza. Level 4, all invocations, seeing a pattern here? That's Bobananza, and apparently I'm in a rush got completed too. Very cool. Moving on, we have Resourceful Raider. Complete a raid without food or brews by having on a diet and dehydration activated. With a yellow Karis, this is absolutely free, but once again, we don't have one of those. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, but during Wardens, there is some unavoidable damage that we need some form of healing to manage. So introducing the God Swords. Both the Saradoman and Ancient God Swords can heal me with their special attacks, and each have scenarios where one is better than the other. The first four rooms pose no threat, especially at only raid level 300. But let's see how they do with the Warden. Resourceful Raider completed, let's keep the show moving. Helpful Spirit Who. Don't take any supplies from the Helpful Spirits. But first, drop the ball. Don't drop your balls in Aka Room. This one got closer than I'd have liked, but that's the task completed. No skipping allowed. You can't break open the boulders that are vulnerable in the Baba fight. And on top of that, you need Boulder Dash on, so you've got less time between the waves. This one's getting done by just using the shadow on the stronger boulders and just saying a prayer. Right, apparently I wasn't praying hard enough. Let's give this another go. That's task done, moving on. Chompington. Defeat Zebak using only melee. Not too hard of a task if you use the sweet spot right here. Chompington, chomping done. You are not prepared. The opposite of Helpful Spirit Who, where instead of not taking the supplies, now those free supplies are the only supplies I can use. On main accounts with diary completions, you can bring in the Falador Shield to give you some prayer back so the first two rooms don't give you rheumatoid arthritis. But I don't have such luxuries, so I've got to flick my brain off, and run around like a headless chicken during the first room but it's just enough prayer to get me through to the end of Baba, and the rest is history. But, damage. The task where you get to dress up like Billy Bob himself by restricting yourself to the best gear that the average Reddit user can afford. Prior to the Wilderness boss rework, we had to use a Nightmare Staff for magic, but now we have the upgraded Thamaron Scepter, so let's have some fun being a noob.
maybe a bit overprepared with the supplies on that one, but that's dressed like a noob. Completed. Now it's time for that second gatekeeping task I mentioned earlier. Perfect Warden. Following the same theme as all the previous perfect tasks before, and coupled with insanity, we've got to do it on expert mode, and with another player. A bit of a recurring theme for a lot of these perfection tasks. So in standardized old-school RuneScape player fashion, we do group content alone. I'm using my main to go through the first paths prior to Warden, while the Grandmaster account logs out during the encounters, but more on logout raids later. After the first four paths are done, the gear gets traded over, and it's time for our future Grandmaster to show what he's got. Keep in mind, any avoidable damage will fail this, including the Lightning during the Enrage phase. This task is argued to be one of the hardest in the raid, next to Perfection of Het. So if we clear it in under an hour of game time, I'm happy again. Yes! First try! <sighs> Next up, we have Fancy Feet. Another duo requirement where you have to defeat the final phase of Warden using only melee attacks. So using the same method to save time, we log out during the pass and have our main trim the fat. But something peculiar happened this raid. Now, Perfection of App Mechan requires you to succeed both of these tasks, but my puzzle room was about six minutes long, so how this completed the boss component and the combination task is beyond me. But I'm not complaining, I will take some free time where I can get it. Now for the Warden fight. This is going to be a lot less stressful, not having to worry about every single lightning bolt. And again, I'm unsure how the Karazi spec will be treated, since it wasn't out when I tested this on my med level. So we're just going to leave it at the bottom of the inventory and pretend it doesn't exist. Pretty easy task, honestly. Two Medimedics. This one's not as bad as it looks. In fact, it's relatively free. I rounded up some humble gamers in my Twitch chat and formed an eight-man team. We've got to beat Kefri without her hit points regenerating past 25%, while the Medic Invocation is active. In a solo, the Invocation is a nuisance, but in a large group, it's not even a challenge. Free task completions all around. Complete the Tombs of Masket Expert mode in 18 minutes or less. And I'm going to need some serious gamers to pull this one off. And where else can I find gamers of this caliber other than 4DCA? Ran by longtime buddy of mine and fellow Jersey Mike's enthusiast, Lucid Dream. 4DCA is a group of individuals who specialize in those pesky team tasks in the combat diary. And the bang is worth the buck if you've got the dough. Well organized and very clear instructions for even the most clueless of Raider. Let's get into the raid and see how this shakes down. Put your CCB on, pray range, try not to interrupt the Kefri puzzles. One of us will try to uh, avenge you before Kefri. I have no potions on me. Oh, wait. Well, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't draw my potions. <laughs> I can drop one restore, one brew. Like, there's no possible way anyone has tapped into that third restore. Try to tank avenge if someone avenged you. Put your range gear on with Tebow, get ready for the arcane, do not attack swarms. Is that back next? Go northeast again. Well, for us, they went northeast. Alright, two Tebows and you can CCB. <laughs> mm, 
missed, please. Missed. I'm gonna go and pick power with the Akka after this. I don't think it really matters at all in these, but... Better tank enter first, make sure your staff is on long range. You're gonna CCB the shadow when it comes up. Do not respawn your thrall. <laughs> yeah, oh, they actually cool. do, it's so dumb. We're gonna run up north to this middle tile. We're gonna stay here until after specials. We're gonna run all the way west. Take a bench bomb here. All you need is vials for corruption, you're gonna be in the northeast corner. Can we drink adrenaline for Baba? No. Yes. Oh, yeah, for Baba. Baba. Yeah, Baba. Yeah, uh, yeah not, for, not for the waves. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, no, I think I drink for the waves. Sure. Well, you, but I'm mean, gonna run all the way west. Skip the blue pipe, just run straight through. Or do a shadow hit. Pick life and go to Warden. Start on the ghost instantly and spawn a range thrall. Spam click the boss. Yeah, from max range. Yep, yep, yep. Hold up to here. DD. You can respawn your thrall. Maybe right side skulls for P3 Warden. After the next set of skulls, you can send ZCB specs if you have any. Mage. Range. Combat task completed. Congrats. Easy PB. With two minutes to spare, that's the eight man speedrun knocked out. Big thank you to 4DCA for helping me out with this one. And I have a feeling if I didn't troll Karanda's path, this would have been a sub 16. And this won't be the last time we see them on the series. With almost every task knocked out, it was time to work on the absolute slog that is kill count tasks. Thankfully, they're all reverse compatible, so 50 Expert Mode will complete all of them. I wanted to use this as an excuse to try and make some decent money on the main after the Mimic incident, but after doing just one 1 plus 1 505 invocation, I said the hell with this, and invited along the chat for some 7 plus 1 friendship raids. There's the 49th raid completed, let's finish off the stragglers I left for the end. There's a few perfection tasks left, so I've got wide back again to help me. That's the perfect monkey puzzle, and the perfect Kefri path. These two were pretty easy to execute in one go. Now for the final task. Maybe I'm the boss. Complete the raid with every boss invocation turned on, and that includes Medic. Let's close out the tombs of a mask at once and for all, shall we? See what's happening here? Past me doesn't realize that Aerial Assault is turned on, and boy is he in for a treat in a few minutes. And here the moment of realization hits. Better get moving. And after what feels like an eternity, that's every Tombs of a Masket task completed. 50 tasks done, and almost 300 tasks in total, with two of the three raids knocked out, 
the Grandmaster Helmet is right around the corner. Thank you for watching. And now a word from today's sponsor, Mick Homie. He is going to be the next best old, uh, new old YouTuber for uh, next year's Golden Gnomes. And you want to get there before everybody else gets there. It's like, it's like finding uh, like a, a record before everyone else finds the record, you know?